What's the scariest thing that happened to you when in someone else's house? I once spent the night at a friend's house. His drunken uncle shook me awake and then my friend as well with all the noise he was making. I opened my eyes started to see a gun to my face and he demanding who the f I was. I was scared speechless and just looked at my friend hoping hex chip in for me. He did. He said, uncle, that's my friend. Chill, uncle, that's my friend. His uncle then put it down and just walked away as if nothing had happened. He was drunk. Hey, hey, big smoke, it's me. Chill, chill. I was house sitting for an aunt of mine while she was on holiday. She told me there was a leak in the lounge area but it was fixed. So if there were any issues to let her know. A massive storm happened a couple nights in. I heard some trickling in the early hours so I went to go check that there wasn't a leak. The entire wall was flooding with water. Like an actual waterfall. Turns out the spouting was blocked and the water was just forcing its way through the cracks in the wall. I knew it wasn't my fault. But it was so terrifying watching someone's house fall apart on your watch. Just piling towels on the floor and shifting furniture to keep everything dry. I was at the stranger's house to give him some money for accidentally hitting him on his bike. I was also on a bike. And the first thing I notice is that his house is really dark. Not in that his lights weren't on. His house didn't have lights at all. No ceiling lights or lamps or anything. Homeboy legit used a flashlight around his own house to get around and find things. Next thing I know, this guy who I've spoken maybe 100 words or less to is showing me a straight up two handed sword and matching dagger that are both razor sharp. This is one of those people who have a harder time being quiet than thinking of things to say, and next thing you know I've been into every room in his place and met his pet parrot the size of a freaking eagle. The reason I was there in the first place was to replace a handmade Italian seat for his bike, and he ended up giving me a pair of $30 gloves, the old gloves that got a few scratches on them when I hit him, 5-10 high-end protein power bars, and a glass of strawberry lemonade. Definitely a strange experience. Unexpectedly wholesome. I wasn't in the house, but just outside it, I went to visit my paternal grandmother at her house. She kept the door locked so she had to come over to unlock it when I arrived. Her living room has large windows that overlook the street and you can even see the door from there so I could easily see her and she could see me. My grandmother was frail and suffered from arthritis and in fact she passed not long after this. As she was walking to the door she fell down in the living room. I had no key to the house and I was freaking out. I had no idea what to do. I was ready to freaking break the living room window in or call 9. 1. 1. Then she somehow managed to climb back up using furniture to prop herself back to her standing position and open the door. After that day I demanded a key to the house from my parents. I hate to think what would have happened if she didn't miraculously get back up. I felt so helpless. Nearly as hopeless as the time my maternal grandfather fell crossing a busy street and traffic was starting back up down the street. At least that time I was able to prop my grandfather up and carry him over to the side of the road before the cars reached us. Moral of the story, watch for your elders falling. The first time meeting my boyfriend's family, who live in another country, we stayed in his old attic bedroom. In the middle of the night, he reaches over and shakes me awake. I mumble and he says, SHHH, be very still, I think there is someone else in the house. I lay motionless, thinking that someone has broken in and I'm about to be psycho murdered. Listening to the sounds of the old creaky attic, convinced every gust of wind is a footstep. He puts his arm around my head, covering my ears. I don't move for hours in fear, until I hear him snoring. And that was the night I discovered, for the first time, he talks in his sleep. Cruelest sleep talking I've ever heard of. I was watching a friend's kids when I was in the army. I was crashed out on the couch early one morning when the door flung open and three kids that didn't live there entered the house. The one in front had a gun. They were making a beeline for the kids bedrooms and had not noticed me on the couch. Scared as crap but not gonna let them just kill the kids I was watching I jumped up and barreled into the lead kid and took the gun. There was screaming and the kids I was watching came running out into the front room. Turns out it was a BB gun. The kid with the gun had just received it as a gift and wanted to show the kids I was watching. The visiting kids had been told by the resident kids that their rents were away for the weekend so they just barged in. Of note they were all like 13 so it wasn't exactly hard to take the BB gun. Still scared she crap out of me. 
I had hallucinations from a fever while staying over at a friend's and thought the dad was just downstairs screaming all night. It was like living through a horror movie. I still have nightmares about it almost 20 years later. The fever was so bad I had a seizure the next day. It's good to know I'm not the only one who hallucinates when having a severe fever. Didn't know this was actually a thing. I've found myself being unable to tell if I'm awake or asleep. When I was around 11 years old I got exploding diarrhea all over my best friend's bathroom. I got very close with her mom that night because I had no idea what to do and she came and helped me clean it up. We grew apart after we graduated high school, but she still reminds me of it sometimes. Now it's funny, but it was traumatizing at the time. I was spending the night at a friend's place in early high school. We were taking a walk around the block and turning onto her street when her little sister runs out of their house and screams bloody murder. She starts running for us, yelling he's killing her, friend's name, he's killing her. We all run to the house where the mom is getting beaten by the stepdad. It was a scary night for sure. About 14 years old, sleeping over at my friend's house. And in the middle of the night we heard some rustling around in her enclosed patio, which was adjacent to the living room we were sleeping in. We shrugged it off because she had two very active outdoor cats who generally slept in the patio. When we woke up the next morning and went out there to eat breakfast, we saw the screen door had been slashed and several pieces of furniture, TV, ETC, were gone. So the rustling we heard in the middle of the night were actually burglars. Not sure if they knew that several teenage girls were in the living room, but still freaks me out a bit when I think about it. Good thing no one snored. Slept over at my friend's house one summer night during high school. Woke up to his mom calling out to him because his stepdad was unresponsive and passed away during the night. My friend when I was around 10 years old used to talk about her ghosts in his house that would turn on the radio in the kitchen when you left the room. Called bulls. Well about a month after, I am waiting on him to get out of the shower, and am in the kitchen having a snack. As I open the cabinet, the radio behind me turns on. I jumped, turn it off, then remember the story. Was afraid to go to the kitchen after that. Scary, but only happened the once to me. His mom didn't want to throw it out or move it in fear of angering whatever it was. Not sure whatever happened to that radio. I had a radio like that in my apartment in university. It was old and the alarm was triggered by the hour hand aligning with another hand that you could move with a knob. It'd randomly go off. My GF and roommate were convinced that a ghost was doing it lol. They didn't like my less spooky explanation that the decades old mechanism was just worn out and malfunctioning. Stayed with my BF and his parents for a few weeks. One night, they left me home alone for a few hours. I decided to take a bath. Ventilation fan is on full blast. Door is closed. Water is running. So I dod hear the beeping. When I turn the tap off, I hear alarms blaring and a robotic voice saying fire, 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 and someone is banging on the front door. I run downstairs in a towel while calling up my BF. Neighbor is at the door because he heard the alarm. He has no idea who I am. Alarm company couldn't get a hold of anyone so they called the authorities. Cop cars, ambulance, and fire trucks show up. Neighbors all crowd on the lawn. I'm still in a freaking towel. Firefighters conclude the steam from the bath set off the alarm. I die of humiliation and never take a bath there again. I die of humiliation and never take a bath there again. Nice of you not to haunt the tub. Age 6-8ish. Slept over at a friend's house with my little brother. Her father woke us all up in the middle of the night, had us bundle up, and loaded us in the family minivan. He drove to a gas station and talked the whole way about how a bakery exploded behind their house. He said the resulting gases and such could kill us, so we had to try and drive as far away as possible. They were also our next door neighbors, so I was worried about our parents' safety. At the gas station, our friend's mom bought us snacks while he canvassed the area. I told her I didn't hear any explosion and asked about my parents. She must have called them from a payphone during the snack run, because they pulled up a few minutes later to take us home. I was, of course, terrified to go home. Later, our parents sat us down to explain that our friend's father was sick with something called schizophrenia that makes him hallucinate. 
I was a freshman in college when I spent Christmas with my high school buddy who didn't go with his family out of town. I went to his kitchen to get a drink when I looked out his kitchen window and saw two figures jumping his fence. Luckily I saw them before turning on the light, so they didn't see me. I quietly told him to get ready to call the cops when I saw them making their way to his door. Without thinking I ran to the door and opened it and yelled, LAPD. Freeze and luckily the two figures got scared and ran away. Thinking back on it they sounded really young and they were probably just gonna ding dong ditch the place or something. But to be safe I stayed with him until his family came home. Plot twist. He lived in NY. When I was like 8 or 9 I was at a relative's house for a family gathering when one of my distant relatives flipped out and grabbed a kitchen knife. I don't remember the details but I'm pretty sure he was threatening people. I remember being ushered into a side room with everyone else and being cramped in there for like a minute or two just listening while a few male relatives who had remained outside with the guy encircled him, got him to calm down, and disarmed him. I learned later that the dude's brain was like partially fried or something from drug abuse. Never saw him at any family gatherings again after that. I was 18 and my friend and I were alone at her house. Her parents were going through a nasty divorce and her dad, who had anger problems, was not allowed to come near the house because the mom had a restraining order. He ended up banging on the door and trying to break in since he knew the mom wasn't home. We hid in my friend's room with a samurai sword while she called her mom to come home. While you were filing a restraining order I was studying the blade. I was cat sitting for some family friends. As I approached the house one evening, I noticed a light was on that hadn't been on that morning. I walked in the front door and yelled up the stairs, but didn't hear anything. There were small things that had been moved around, a knife on the counter and some trinkets, etc. But nothing was missing except the cat, it never came running for its food. I checked all the rooms but no sign of the kitty. I even checked the fridge, and noticed the pepperoni had been moved from the shelf to the drawer. Why did the cat burglar move the dang pepperoni? Well it turned out that the family had a maid that I didn't know about and she had accidentally closed the cat in a closet. One of my friends from childhood would have really bad night terrors. She would either wake up in the middle of the night screaming at the top of her lungs or she would randomly jump up and start running for the front door trying to get away from whatever she thought was chasing her. It was always pretty terrifying waking up to her screaming or tripping over me while trying to get to the door. Argies. This was my childhood too. Only I was the one having the night terrors. I still have them from time to time and feel bad for my husband for having to deal with surprise night time screams lol. I house sat for my childhood crush when we were 12 ish as her family went on a 6 week road trip around the US. They had a cat and a bird and you see where this is going. This stupid little finch got out of its cage. Legit. The cage was closed when I returned the next day, and the cat killed it. I was obviously scared out of my mind of being the guy who killed, crushes, bird so I did the only logical thing and went to the pet store and bought both of the finches they had that looked identical. I had about 2 weeks to figure out which was more like the cat bait and then, not knowing what to do with the other, I kept it. They never found out, or told me if they did, and that's the story of how I ended up with a pet finch. Forgetting to ask for a towel prior to getting into the shower. Oh god, you just dredged up a memory I have of sleeping at a friend's house when I was about 10. I was already in the shower when my friend came in and announced that her dad wanted a shower after me and the towel I'd grabbed was the only clean towel so her mom told her to take mine. I had to dry off with my dirty PJS. Was playing hide and seek at my best friend's house. Found an awesome spot under his parents bed when I looked to the side and saw a human foot, with the calf attached, wearing a shoe and everything. I felt my soul leave my body and made up some excuse and ran home. Turns out his mum was an amputee and it was her prosthetic leg but didn't know until my parents mentioned it a while later. I was 14 or 15 and spent many weekends at my friend's house. One day we discovered that her mom's boyfriend has a hidden camera in her room, under her desk. I was supposed to go on vacation with them and my mom told me she didn't feel comfortable with him. We found that camera a week later. Thanks mom. A friend was doing some long term house sitting and invited me over to hang. The owners were aware and okay with this. We went down into the basement since that's where the TV was. 
We got about halfway down the stairs, and see this thing sitting on a shelf. It was about the size of a small dog, and kind of fuzzy. It didn't look alive, but the prospect of a dead thing was even worse. We noped out and went back upstairs to watch Netflix on the laptop instead. About a week later, my friend texted me. The thing was a mushroom garden that they'd put down there and apparently completely forgotten about. What the frick? Moldy fungi stuff freaks me out so I'd be scared af. This happened when I was like 8. I went over to this girl's house, really liked her. Her older brother told us about Bloody Mary, and she was ecstatic to try and summon her, so she asked me to come with her, and of course I said yeah. So we go in there, turn off the lights, shut the door, she starts chanting it, and the brother starts pounding on the door, screaming. When we tried to open the door, it was locked, and he kept pounding and screaming oh god she's got a knife help. After like a while he finally let us out, laughing his butt off. Mirrors freaking scared the crap out of me until I was 16, and I am still wary of them to this day. Oh god, bloody Mary, I used to hate to being in the bathroom in the dark. I always thought she was going to come murder me. You have been visited by the holy doggo. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.